Yeah. Yeah. My house, unfortunately, though, is not a strip club. It has it tile. Be. It has wood look tile floors. <laughs> That I love, but someone else at the table does not like. So, although, although I'm let's, still the let's extol the virtues of the wood look tile floors and how great they would be for a strip club because they're so easy to clean. I mean, all the mess could get bleached I mean, up so fast. The glitter, the puke, everything, just oh. like pss, vacuum, steam mop, of, it's good to go. A lot of smashed faces from sliding Ooh, around. Oh, like broken thing. teeth. Oh, yeah. I like have noses. had a lot. There's been a lot of bodily fluids on this floor. Okay, but she's still, she still is telling you this is not actually a strip club. It isn't actually a strip club. I just have kids and dogs and glitter. And Rebecca. <laughs> and feathers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, can, you, can I come tomorrow? Uh... At some point, yes, my mom's going to be over cooking all day, and um, I have book club in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yes, but we'll have to figure out when that time is so <laughs> that we're not getting in my mom. My mom is, so we are pulling an audible this year, and Thanksgiving, um, we always have Thanksgiving at my parents' house. They host Thanksgiving. I host Christmas. That's how it works. Okay. Um. But because of the puppies and the fact that my parents have a uh, 11 year old, so Brutus's brother is my parents' dog. So my parents Brutus's have. Brutus's brother is, oh. Yes. So Brutus and it's a whole story. But anyway, my mom, my parents like rescued Brutus and Tank's mom. And so we each took a puppy. So Brutus has since passed this year, but his brother, Tank, is my parents' dog. And Tank still thinks he's a puppy. And so he will try to play with the puppies and match their energy and their craziness. And everyone's kind of worried that he's going to hurt himself because he's like 11 and isn't a puppy, but thinks he is. So <clears throat> because they don't want to, they don't really want them like stuck together for a long period of time. My mom's going to come over tomorrow and my mom always cooks Thanksgiving because my family, although they'll argue with you, hates it when I try new things. Mm -hmm. And if I host Thanksgiving, I'm going to try new recipes and I'm going to make I'm going to make new stuff. And it's going to be like, "Ooh, let's try this. Let's try this. And they'll be like, this sucks. I hate it. So in order to keep it as normal as possible, my mom is going to come over and cook everything at my house. And we're just going to have it at my house. And then my dad's going to come over on Thanksgiving Day and eat dinner with us and hang out and then they're going to go back to their house. So, anyway, I'm hosting Thanksgiving, but I'm oh, not You know what's changed about you know, my situation? Charge of food. I don't know if you if, if it's still an option, but I'm available Friday night. Oh, okay. So I could even come over Friday beforehand and help you set up and fix everything. Okay. Yeah, we'll be around. The kids are going with my parents. So I don't we'll know be... if that if I still have an invite to your holiday party. Yes, but I'm, you're available. <laughs> you're but I'm available now. You're still invited. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. But um, so yeah, that'll I'll be, Uber. it'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting, like, we're basically using my house for Thanksgiving and my kitchen. And, yeah. But, but that's your mom's okay. Cooking. But I'm not, but she's cooking and yeah. she's going to bring, she's, I mean, it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm happy to have them over. I just like. Will you save me some leftovers? It's, <laughs> does she make good stuffing? The stuffing's amazing. Yeah. Does she make Her sausage stuffing, stuffing or cornbread stuffing? No, neither. It's just like bread and sausage mushrooms. Stuffing. Mushrooms. And so it's like an oyster. So, some, some, it's like mushrooms and butter is all it tastes like. Yeah, bread okay. and mushrooms and Which butter. Which is like some people put Which sausage sucks. in that. Which sucks. Like I just savory. realized. Some people put sausage in that. I'm not going to be able Brown to have sausage. stuffing for the for, for this year. Yeah. You won't. Gluten -free. Can I you will, can have cornbread I stuffing? Will cornbread can be gluten free. Your portion. Cornbread <laughs> stuffing is <laughs> gross. <laughs> She's <laughs> not just like, I'll make fine. you stuffing. She's like, I'll take your food. I'm like, cool. <laughs> take my food. Cornbread stuffing's disgusting. I don't yeah. like it either, but that's what you could. sort of the southern. But thing the is. bread stuffing, like the savory, that is like sausage. So some people put like a like a Jimmy Dean's breakfast type sausage in. Yeah, it. we never did that. But yeah. I had bread bread. Stuffing, stuffing that's growing right. up, like it was like northern, you know, with sage and stuff like that. Yeah, yes. that's that's, that's what she makes. That I'm and she used saves to. like her stuffing is like it's it's incredible because okay, so she saves save like some. crusts and pieces of bread through like the whole year and cuts them up in cubes and freezes them. 
and makes her own croutons I knew I with liked them. Her for a reason. So she like soaks them in butter. She makes her own croutons, and then she takes all of that and makes the stuffing out of it. And it's it is my absolute favorite part of Thanksgiving. And I just realized I'm not going to be able to have it. Stuffing's my favorite, and part. I'm not going to be able to have green bean casserole because that's my second Cream favorite mushroom. because of the. Mm-hmm. Um, is the mu- does the cream mushroom has, does uh-huh. but also the onions those the yes, fried, fried onions. onions you could probably get fried onions at sprouts though that are oh. gluten-free. you're gonna ruin the whole dish just for her my life just my life just ended I'll eat some turkey and cry see about, I think what about I the have, cranberry sauce what do y'all think about cranberry see, sauce okay this is my unpopular opinion like mm-hmm. I don't really care about any of this stuff honestly that is super like, unpopular I don't. I, I just I don't have like le- like food is not my love language. Uh. I'm food fine. I literally could eat pizza. This is why I, I was don't a fat care. Kid. I love I don't food. care. Like I like all these things, but I don't love all these things, and I don't like oh, crave all these things. I like, love. I don't know. I'm just like there's mm. foods that are like it comfort like, foods for me. It honestly seems like so much work. Like Thanksgiving. I won't host. You're you're cooking for like like your the, mom's cooking the year. day before. My husband is the cook in the family. He food is definitely his love language. He cooks. He, he was. I was trying to get him to go do something tomorrow. And he's like, he looked at me like I was a crazy person. Yeah. He's, he's like, I have to cook. And I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. For two days? For oh, one yeah. Day? My mom's hardly probably... already started. Oh. That's the hard thing is like legitimately yeah. when you think about like Thanksgiving growing up, like we would all go to my grandma's house. Like I'm sure she cooked for the week leading up to the like, 30 people she had to feed or yeah. whatever it was. I've, I don't really know. But I do love Thanksgiving food. I, and I love I, stuffing. I love like canned cranberry sauce like i'll that, eat that year round i, I cran- tried cran- making my own cranberry sauce yeah, no. one year and that was when everything fell apart and yeah. my family was like we hate you you're never hosting <laughs> thanksgiving again because i tried cranberry. to make it homemade it was no. so good but they yeah, were like no this no. doesn't yeah. look like the can shape i agree with so them it's like yeah. sliced and just blocked yes. on the plate so i've made <laughs> homemade stuff and i've bought it from central market and it's good it's tasty but like the it canned cranberries the like i will straight up just like take the can like yeah and just eat it uh-huh. That's what you do. Like, yeah. Like, like and if July, it doesn't have the I'll ridges from the can, nobody's happy. If it doesn't have the ridges, it's not <laughs> It's got to have the ridges. That's right. <laughs> it's like the potato chips. you got to have the yes. ridges. Ruffle. Ruffle. Yes. Ruffles. Ruffles. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. Real cranberry sauce is good, and I've made some good stuff and bought some good stuff, but yeah. I still <laughs> want just like the blob coming out of the can. Well, okay, I'm bored talking about food. Uh, okay. Well. <laughs> just saying. I'm the done with this is, conversation. The we're funny thing about is. Or what about yeah. running? Well, why don't we yes. talk about an article? Okay. Um, Thank you. The funny thing that is, nice though, segue. that this, uh, <laughs> this episode will come out after Thanksgiving. So everyone oh, will get oh, to lovely. listen to all, all of, of our Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving stuff. goodness. So I'm the Thanksgiving I mean, bitch. I think it's fine. <laughs> Thanksgiving yeah. bitch. <laughs> That's me. It's like a costume. I was going to call you a costume. Is it like the Grinch? But you're a little like bit cringy, I guess. Yeah. No, okay. I'm gonna say one more thing. So there are like 25 different things, right? That people are gonna have for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna have like a bite or two of each one, and I'm yeah. still gonna be stuffed to the and gills. It's amazing. And then you yes. eat it again later, and then you have See, the apple pie for breakfast. I don't even like pie. We are done. <laughs> what? I give me a good no pie. Ca- give me a good cheesecake. I love cheesecake, but you don't like Ooh, pie. None. I wonder if we could make a gluten-free pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, you can. I'm gonna do it. I don't like pumpkin either. Oh, you don't what? like pumpkin either. I'm gonna make it. I'm, I'm a total. So that I have I'm, something. To I'm eat. a total. Yeah. I don't really like Thanksgiving, bitch. the holiday. I actually kind of hate it. It's like become this like I hate this week kind of thing. Not really. I do. Like <laughs> I send my kids off with their dads. Like I have zero interest in it. But I love the food. I do. We um, hence the uh, on the backside. We. <laughs> We like Thanksgiving because we get to spend time with my parents. We don't see them that much because everybody's busy. And even though they live close, we don't. I see my mom more because she comes and helps with jobs, but I don't see my dad very often. So that's always nice. My kids love it because they go to um, they go to my parents' house for a couple of days after Thanksgiving. Usually, this year was a whole. My mom's like, they don't have to if they don't want to. It's they're getting older, you know, and yeah. they both were like. <gasps> shocked because they were like well what do you mean we're not oh, going to go over sweet, and I was though. like well you, you're allowed to go over they just don't want you to feel <laughs> obligated feel like you have to go because there's not much to do as they get to teenagers you know, they don't really want to hang out with yeah. them and grandpa oh but they both do and Aww. they were both like no we need to go like this is our time with them we don't we don't That's get to spend sweet. time with them sweet. so yeah so that was really good I think that I think that'll be good for them um so yeah, I mean it's good. The food for me isn't really my favorite part either. I like some of the things, but the it's things fine. that I like apparently I'm not going to be eating. So that's the only thing I like about Thanksgiving is the food. So 
Anyway, but I do like that there's, I like the break. I like the fact that there's a week where we have time where we can, my things kids are home down. and things aren't as busy. And, and there's not so many parties and activities and obligations. Like at Christmas, we have time off, but yeah, there's, there's cookie parties lot. and this and that and the parades and blah, 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 blah. there's a lot to do. Yeah. yeah. So, well, anyway, okay, uh, Thanksgiving to... usually happens in homes. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Good. Yeah, yeah, that was great. You're welcome. It was oh. terrible. Um, so, Rebecca brought us an article today to talk about, and it's about home staging. Talk so about. let's read. We're going to kind of do some touch points because this is a, a bit of a long article, but I'll read it to you guys and then we can talk about it. Uh, the article is Home Staging Can Sway Budget Conscious Buyers. And this is by, because I know you're going to ask, Melissa Dittman Tracy. Where Where was it? Where was it written? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the National Association of Realtors website, I bet. Yes, it's on, it is. She writes for them. It is. Yes, I recognize that. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Okay. Move-in ready appeal is important as cash-strapped consumers look for properties in which they don't have to sink extra money. A new NAR, NAR. report finds. National Association of Realtors. With high housing costs forcing more home buyers to max out their budgets, many are seeking a move-in ready property for which they don't have to sink money into renovations. Even for a listing that may need minor repairs, proper home staging can beef up the appeal of low maintenance and speed up the sale. <clears throat> and that's according to the National Association of Realtors. Mm. As days on market has lengthened for home sellers, it is not a surprise to see the return of home staging as a tool to attract potential buyers. The return? I love that. It never left. For people. me, it never left. But, it's you kind know. Of like wallpaper. It never really left. <laughs> and would look tile floors. I don't know if I'd say like wallpaper. Um, but... Buyers want to easily envision themselves within a new home and home staging is a way to showcase the property in its best light. Staging isn't just for the benefit of in-person visitors. Buyers who see photos of a staged property online are more willing to do a physical walkthrough, survey respondents said. And of note, there's a few um, a few numbers in here. 81% of buyer's agents say staging helps their clients visualize life in a home. A third say staging boosts home value, particularly if the aesthetic fits the client's tastes. Only a third said it boosts value. <clears throat> that's what it says. Dumb. I think that's bullshit. And yeah, nearly a quarter of survey respondents overall say staging may help buyers look past property faults. Though that many buyers with. want a move-in ready home. I think home, the number's higher, but that's like a big piece of it. Sorry. You should be cognizant of how reality television shows are manipulating their understanding of the market. 64% of respondents to to the survey, sorry, Melissa, you missed a word, <laughs> uh, say their buyers Editor. have been disappointed with homes they've toured versus homes they've seen on TV. 55% blame TV shows for giving buyers unrealistic expectations about how, how homes should look. When getting ready to list a home for sale, it's vital to complete the necessary prep work to make a favorable and lasting first impression, um, says this guy, Kenny Parcell. <laughs> Realtors provide this guy, this valuable guy. guidance on how best to make your home an inviting space that connects with prospective buyers and stands out from the competition. So um, then it talks about to stage or not to stage. That is the question. That's never the question. It's not. <laughs> it's, it is what kind of staging. That is not the question. So uh, just a, a little bit of a recap. It says, even though homes have sold quickly in most markets over the last year, many real estate pros recommend staging services to their sellers. However, practitioners most often recommend staging for luxury or stigmatized properties. Is that like where someone's murdered? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We had like the we had problem about that. Murder. The problem properties. Yeah. Mm. Only 23% say they stage every listing, whether they do it themselves. This says a median cost Don't of four hundred dollars. Oh, more, oh, hold on. Wait for this. Oh, this is gonna piss me off. Hold on. Go, go. Whether they do it themselves. Median cost of four hundred dollars, or hire a professional, six hundred dollars. They're saying that the median cost of home staging is six hundred dollars uh, for a professional home stager. Yes, 
Hey guys, I'm more expensive than the median cost. <laughs> but yes, abs- y'all know. <laughs> but absent professional staging, pros say homes still need to be well prepped before going on the market. Uh, blah 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 yeah. blah 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 blah. So, and then there's a graph. Uh, there's, a graph. <laughs> there's a graph. The end. Uh, this I'll bring the graph up later because I yeah. think that's interesting. It, I'll uh, I'll tell you about it. And there's Melissa smiling about the words that she missed. Mm-hmm. Oh, Melissa. <laughs> yes. We do like the article. We appreciate you, Melissa. Yes, yeah. yes. So, she's just I love her smile. She's so happy. She's ready for some stuffing on Thanksgiving. Heather. Yes. Why don't you stay? You don't ever stage your own properties. You don't even like go in and consult on staging your own properties. Like you don't touch the staging piece. Why? It's I feel like it's the same as touching the title piece or touching the mortgage piece or she doesn't like touching things or touching the photography piece. Or like I don't like touching things. Well, no, she yeah. doesn't. She's like me. No touchy. <laughs> no touchy. I'm a big bubble. <laughs> no, no touchy. <laughs> but I feel like Realtors need to, need to stay in their lane. You need there to stay in your lane. You need to you need to lean into like your own expertise. I'm not going to be an expert on everything. I don't want to be an expert on everything. And do you even and have time to? It's stage? a lot of work to be an expert on everything. It is a lot of work. I I could make you you can always what make would, time. What, but what, what would you be giving up though? If you're staging, what would you have to give up? Um, going on new listing appointments, finding new clients, yeah. going to, like all these things. Like how doing all the other things I do while you stage the house, right? Yeah, but. The, the other part that I feel like is really important that a lot of agents don't recognize is having someone in between me and the client. That is a huge advantage, especially if I do a walkthrough, I talk to clients, and I notice something that is going to have to be addressed. I might soft pet a little, little bit, but then I'm going to call you and I'm going to say, Go be the bad please, guy. Yes, go be the bad guy and please address this while you're staging the house. And then I can blame you and say, well, you know, sometimes she's a bitch, but she's usually right. And it's but help. she's the Thanksgiving bitch. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, sorry. Dang, Dang it. Yeah. No, but um, I, I do find it funny when articles like that come out when the market is changing and people are saying, oh, we might need to stage homes now. Oh, it's so no, funny. you really need to stage homes all the time because that's actually what's best for your clients. So. People saying, oh, I'm going to add that to my, you know, Burn. list of services now. I'm going to add that to my list of services now. Like, you really should have always been doing that sure because that's, what, and there's, that's what's there's best for your clients. Two re- two main reasons for that. One, I don't care if the house is selling for $200,000 or $2 million. Home, proper professional home staging is going to increase the perceived value in that final price that you get. So whatever you're selling it for in whatever market, it's going to increase that sale price. So you're going to get your sellers more money. The other part of it is your own personal branding. Do you really want to put listings out there where they like have the aerosol can of like poop smell spray stuff on the back of the toilet? Or is it the high end potpourri brand? The poopery. Poopery. Thank you. <laughs> A little plug right there. Um, it's not. We're not like, getting paid by them. <laughs> Doctor Phil, we'd still like to God. have you on our show. <laughs> God, I would. I don't fangirl over anything. Like I don't. <laughs> I don't care who, like, I really don't. If Dr. Phil walked through that door right now, I'd shit myself. Like, I would. <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, it would have to be Ben Affleck or something, not Dr. Phil. I, ben Affleck, I would maybe. I want myself. therapy from him so badly that I would do anything. I need it so bad. I anyway, want therapy so- from Ben Affleck, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that therapy all day long. <laughs> With some stuffing on the side? I'll, I'll, if you want stuffing, <laughs> give me some stuffing. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's who we need. But, um, but like the branding for the agent and then also I don't care if the market's down, the market's up, what it's doing, what your house price is. It's going to, if it's done properly by a professional, increase. For $600. Yeah. <sighs> So here's the thing. There's also different kinds of staging. There's consultations. There's occupied. There's vacant staging. And those all have their own price point. So maybe the mm-hmm. $600 is referring to the median price for an occupied consultation or something. I don't know, right? The, the reality is my staging services start at $300 and go up to w- way more. They go more. up quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly. Yes. <laughs> but it's- and it's well worth it. It is worth it. But three dollars because that's a, that's it that's worth it. that's a consultation with me. Yeah, get me in there and I'll tell your clients what to do. If you want to trust them to do it, that's on you. It's usually not a good idea, but that that is a bottom line, so you can at least get them pointed in the right direction. At any rate, it's going to get them no mon- more money. It, 
And everyone's like, well, we don't have time for stage. You know, we don't have, you can take two days. If you don't have time from the first time you meet them or know that that's there to when you're doing pictures, then you need to. Something's how, off. So, yeah, something's, something's wrong. Off. Someone's emergency, here's, whatever it is. Here's the thing that I've never liked since I got in the business and decided that staging was going to be part of my services. Which was very quickly I, for you. It, yeah, it was like immediate. I yeah. didn't list without it ever. Right. But um, Not one listing without it? Mm-mm. Okay. Not since the beginning. Nope. Um, the thing is that the staging consultations, I never thought that was a good idea because sellers are already stressed about mm-hmm. selling their house in the first place. Yep. They're already overwhelmed with the idea of packing and moving and things like that. So the idea that I'm gonna go I'm gonna go in and have a stager go in and walk around their house with a list of things to do and that then I'm gonna hand them that list to do it and they're yeah. gonna do it. They're, you're creating work in their mind, which is exactly what you don't want to do. And they get more overwhelmed and get less done. I discourage I will provide consultations and do walk and talks. I really discourage them because it is too much for them with everything else they're dealing yeah. with. And the reality is, let's say I give them a list of 10 things. They'll do five, maybe. Because they don't believe you. They already think their house They don't believe good. me. I mean, they're honestly, They're offended. A lot of time, they're overwhelmed. Yeah. They don't give two fucks. Like, all the reasons. They're going to... I mean, and that's anything. You give a homeowner a list of whether you're giving them a list of things to do to prep the house or a stager's doing it. They're going to look at it and maybe do 50% of what you're asking them to do. And the really bad thing is the things that they take off the list are probably the... Most more, important. Most mm-hmm. important pieces. Okay, so. Like taking the drape, the, their that, heinous drapes down. That brings us to the chart. Oh, but I, I do want to talk about the, the HGG, uh, HGTV thing before okay. we wrap this up. Just so that, I'm going to. Yes. Go ahead with the chart. I wanted to do a little like. Can we see the chart? No, because oh. it's going to be a guess. It's okay. a guessing game. Oh, I like, I like guessing games. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There are, Who do you appreciate? There are eight Thanksgiving spaces. Bitch. No. There are eight spaces, okay, that it says the most important, like the ranked in order of importance of what's the most important to least important space to stage. Living room. And I want to know if you can get them right. Okay. Living room's number one. Number one. Living room. Final answer. Living room. Living room. Number two. Master, Master bedroom. bedroom. Kitchen. Final answer. Three. Oh, wait, which was, what was it? It was master. Oh, okay. I thought she was saying that we were wrong, so I was like... No, oh. no, no. No. Like, no. Okay. Number three. Kitchen or dining? Kitchen. Oh, you can't do two? Well, sometimes they combine them. Number four. Dining. Dining. Okay. <laughs> Number five. <gasps> Bathrooms, master bathroom. Think about it. Office. This is a trick. Office. Or outdoor space. Outdoor living space. Outdoor living. Bam! Oh, this is why you hire me, because I know. Yard, outdoor space. <laughs> Number, what was that? Five? I don't know. Number six. Office. The- Office got to be in there somewhere. Master bathrooms, bathrooms. Bathroom. Number seven. Okay. Office. See, this is why I Office hire you. Office is not on the list. Office is not Whoa, on the list. No. Heather. Okay, so bathrooms and then. Pro- There's two more. Okay, after bathrooms, um, I guess maybe are they secondary? saying media rooms and bonus rooms? Yeah, secondary living. Those are not on the list either. Secondary living room. Foyer then... entry. Foyer entry. Not on the list. I think they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm you guys saying. are good through number six. <laughs> yeah. So what's the last new? two are children's bedroom and guest room. Th- those are bullshit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you bullshit. right now. You the, can the, take it up with Melissa. Uh, Melissa and I'll talk about because I'll tell you the foyer or entry, the first impression of the house first is more important. Here, than talk to her. I'm there t- she is. Right now. Like I tell my kids, show me your eyes so we can talk. <laughs> but foyer, first it's foyer slash first impression. Yeah. And the the forefront of the house, the curb appeal, the front curb porch, appeal is way huge. more important than secondary yeah. bedrooms and kids' bedrooms. Way more important. Well, good job. I mean, you got the top six before you. Mm-hmm. you started to deviate. Well, so. they're okay, wrong. Okay, so, so we didn't do your, your HGTV. Um, well, they talk about how the TV shows, like so, like the reality shows and stuff, are fucking with our heads, and they are. Yeah, like, I agree. From a staging perspective, from a how to sell your house perspective, of the expectation of how you're supposed to live in your house, it it is fucking with because people now think that they're supposed to live in this like white shiplap fucking castle. I mean, some of them do. <laughs> Somebody likes white a lot, and at this table. She might be wearing but, white. But Kate, sometimes do you have cheerleading shit spread all over your front dining table? Oh, yeah. 
All the time. All the time. Because you're living in your home. Mm -hmm. My thing is, and they do it with like how to sell your house and what, you know, every house should be sold like this. Well, not every house is going to sell like this, you know, as a $2 million, whatever it is that they, they want to show you on TV. And people are feeling bad about their homes and they think that their homes can't garner the best price. They can. You just have to tailor the staging plan and the marketing plan to what the house is. And nobody lives in this perfect little bubble where there's never a mess on the floor or the dogs don't ever shit on the floor or your husband doesn't ever shit on the floor. Shit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> or your friend doesn't like cut up flowers I mean, in your bed in your bathroom. Husband, I mean, things sorry. happen. Get rid of that husband. <laughs> Shit happens. Well, I don't know. Shit um, happens, guys. But like, I, social media and like the the reality TV stuff is really messed with people's perception of how they're supposed to sell their home, live in their home. Here's what I think the difference is: the kind of home they should be able to live in because they can't afford what they're in. Here's what I think the difference is that people don't recognize is that stuff is for entertainment, not education. Ding, That's ding, the ding, thing. Ding, ding, ding. Is they're but they, they're at, confusing them. Yeah. That's and the it's, thing. Yeah. But because they need somebody to pull back the veil and explain to them what's real. Right. right. But it's sad to me because it really does mess with people's like mental health. And I, I know you guys don't like when I bring up mental health, but like it messes with people's <laughs> like I feel like you guys get another thing. Like they feel bad about themselves if their house isn't this way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've had homeowners be like, wait, 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 these pictures are gonna go out and my neighbors are gonna see the house and da 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 da. And they're like scared to show people what their house really looks like. I'm like Stop thinking that what's on TV or social media is real, especially for how you live in your house. But from selling too, like not everybody's going to have the, what's the sunset, Shaw's sunset. T- I am Shaw's of sunset, I guess. Isn't that selling sunset? That. Selling, 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 oh, selling sunset. That, that yeah. show. Yeah. Where you're selling like, where it's like LA but and the, the gazillion dollar house. Like, like not on everybody's, the beach. Yeah. Like not everybody <laughs> has that house and that's okay. But here's the thing about staging though too, is that that is a bit of what you're trying to portray in a way you are portraying almost like um we're trying like to... what hgtv is does your and what model homes do that's the way i explain it to people too a lot of times is this is why builders have model homes because you want something to aspire to and when well, you can stage a house and make it look um a little bit more updated with a fluff package or this or that or you know just make it look like it's got some design to it it helps people aspire to that and people really like psychologically respond really well to that. And well, that's why and stage I homes sell think more. It's yep. also more about making sure that that particular home presents at its best possible way. It's right. not going to necessarily match what's on HGTV, no. but it's going to present. And it's, it's again, like I like You're it into a first date. You're what leveling I'm up. You yeah. are making sure that it is putting forth its best first impression like mm-hmm. you do on a first date mm-hmm. nails are polished clothes fit right makeup like a done job here. interview a job you interview show up to your job interview in your sweatpants no nope. well it's also like unless it's virtual and then you wear them on the naked, bottom half you don't and wear your suit on the top you mm-hmm. don't show up to a zoom meeting you can do that uh-huh. yeah virtual yeah virtual but you're not going to match what's on tv but you still can put forth its best first impression like, that, a dating, like a dating app is what I hear. Yes, it is. It's a, a dating. It's, it's you put the picture of yourself that's twenty years old, and you show up to <laughs> catfish. Well, like, that's yeah, catfishing. Exactly. That's yeah. virtual yeah. staging, which I thought we weren't going to talk about that because we're not. And on that note, okay, continue. But oh, I'm done. I think I'm some done. of their I think some of their numbers are a little low because, and maybe not. There's so many agents out there. That's a problem. That that kind of floods those numbers as far as how many agents think that. I mean, there there's are a lot so of agents many out there. agents. Yeah. Yep. Um. I know a lot of agents that still do it themselves, but I challenge them to think about what other work they could be doing if they would hand over staging, because I guarantee there is a better use of your time than be doing staging work. Just like an inspector is not going to go do the title work, right? Like you say that best all the time. Like there are so many other things that an agent needs to worry about. There's no reason for them to be worried about furniture placement or poopery on the back of the toilet. Like no reason. So. I mean, we're ragging on poopery, though. <laughs> what happens when somebody goes on? What happens when they go into the house to look at the house and it turns into like a Lowe's trip and you're just like, oh, God, I got to go. What does Lowe's have to do with pooping? Have you never? I walk into Lowe's and I'm just like, <laughs> got to go, guys. Like it's overwhelming. Meet you at the front. <laughs> like, like, are you the home repairs being overwhelming or what? No, no. she's saying she's got to take a <laughs> shit every time she goes to Lowe's. <laughs> what? What is happening? What is happening in this conversation? That's like a total left turn, left field. I don't even know. Dude, is this real? Yeah. Every time you go to Lowe's, you have to take a shit. That is just the worst place ever. <laughs> the fluorescent lighting and all this stuff. And it's just like immediately overwhelming. <laughs> Maybe Can I it's... resign from this podcast episode, please? <laughs> what is happening here? 
<laughs> on that note, um, okay. stage your homes, people. Yes. So I think that they, I mean, they have some great points in there. I think their numbers are skewed. But I don't know that we're ever going to get, like, a real great sampling. It's really hard to get statistics on home staging. But um, I'll look that up the next time I'm sitting at Lowe's. <laughs> so, so when Mark's like, hey, let's go to Lowe's, you're like, let me grab my no! wipes. <laughs> I don't want to go. I'm staying home. But it's like, if you ever have a colonoscopy, go to Lowe's right before. <laughs> Stop over on the way. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone right now with this conversation. What is what is going? Okay, I'm just gonna drink my Starbucks and we're over here. All right, are, are we done with this episode? I'm done with we're it. Done. We're okay, done. we're done. Oh, thanks, Melissa. Thank you, you have, Melissa. Thank you, you for the article that contributed to all of this. Your crazy. chart was marginally okay, and you're missing words. <laughs> <laughs> and Kate's gotta go to Lowe's. Bye. Uh, Rabbit. Okay. Oh no. <gasps> that was weird.